Hello, everyone. I hope that you all are welcome. Welcome to Global Woman Insights, another episode of Amazing Woman Who Is With Me. First of all, Ramadan Mubarak to all of you. I hope that you had enjoyed your Ramadan because we are almost at the end of our Ramadan. Today was Juma last Friday of Ramadan. It was it is called as Jumatul Vida. We all celebrate it with our humbleness, with our prayers for our forefathers, for our future generation and peace in the world. So today's episode is a special episode today because I have invited one of my very dear friend and my class fellow as well in International Women's Forum's uh, class of 2023 and 24, Fariba Razai. So let me introduce you to her. Uh, she's a first Olympian Afghan woman who has played in Olympia. Olympian, uh, Olympics in 2004 from Afghanistan and made history in presenting her country at such an international level. So Fariba has made history and she's here with us and we'll talk a lot about her. Uh, Fariba is not only an athlete, she is a judo champion and has helped her country, not only her countrymen, but also most importantly, she is helping women and girls from Afghanistan to live up to their expectations and build their lives as it is their right. Um, so Fariba is the founder and uh, executive director of Women of Leaders of Tomorrow, a non-profit organization, and she's based in Vancouver, Canada. And I'm so honored that she has joined us today. So welcome to Fariba. Fariba, thank you so much for joining us. And good morning to you. Hello, Aslam Alaikum. Thank you so much for having me and uh, Ramazan Mubarak. Thank you so much, Fariba. And you know what? Fariba uh, is one of the uh, uh, important, uh, is is my class fellow, as I said, shared with you. And we are live and streamed on all the four uh, platforms, on pages on LinkedIn, I have shared with you. And if you have any questions during our conversation, uh, you can ask questions, you can comment and share with us. And I'll ask Farida, Fariba about all those questions. So first of all, Fariba, um, let me ask you one important question. As you are a uh, Olympian, uh, which is not an easy job and coming from Afghanistan is also not an easy work that you're doing. And of course, you are an advocate of women and girls' rights, especially education and inspiring them throughout your work since you had been, uh, you know, inspiration, you had been working so far. So first of all, let me ask you, Fariba, what is your story? How was the childhood look like when you were there in Afghanistan? And especially coming from a ethnic minority there and um, choosing sports as a field, which is quite challenging there in Afghanistan. So over to you, Fariba. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you so much for giving me this uh, platform and opportunity to share my story. Well, I was born and raised in Afghanistan. Um, at a very young age, I was realizing that girls and boys don't have the same right. For example, my cousins, uh, many uh, boys in the community had so many opportunities and freedom, but I did not have. Um, and I was also very um, full of energy. I always want to do something. So I chose the sport of martial, art, martial arts, uh, judo, because it matched my energy. Judo is a sport where you wear the uniform, tie your belt, and you go on the mats, and then you wrestle, and it's a high intense sport. So I found that very empowering. And uh, as I was playing judo, I realized that this is a perfect way for me to inspire other women and to make space for myself and for other um, Afghan girls in Afghanistan. And when I started judo, it was a very unique time in the history of Afghanistan. It was at uh, the time in 2002, um, 2001, early 2001, Afghanistan was just recovering from US war, from so many other devastation and conflict. So it was rare for women to uh, join sport. And when I started judo, we were only three girls uh, in the entire country, myself and two other teenage uh, girls. At that time, I was also at the high school. So uh, being a Hazara ethnic minority in Afghanistan, it was very difficult. Uh, but um, at a young age, I believed that when you were born, you have the right to uh, practice judo and uh, have an education and have freedom and be able to that any other 
uh, of the community. Yes, Fariba, um, especially your judo practice, um, your inspiration, there must be somebody who, who would have been there in your family, who was supporting you and who was an inspiration for you and who has shaped you who, uh, the way you are today. So who are those people and what, what those people matter to you? Because those are the people who, uh, we, we are not lonely in our struggles. There are always people around us who always help us. So who are those people? Absolutely. I must mention their names and I must, must mention who they are because I must give them credit. So I come from a very big Afghan family. So I have four brothers and I have three sisters and my parents. So big family, which is very normal in Afghanistan. And I'm number seven. So you can imagine the household. Um, my father always supported me for whatever I did, whoever person I was. My mother at the beginning, she was a bit hesitant because she wanted to protect me because it was very dangerous for a woman to play sport, go outside, go to the dojo, judo centers and play martial art and compete locally and internationally. But later she realized that um, I could do it. Um, I was able to do it. My father always supported me and my father is the greatest father in the world and he never discriminated between me and my brothers and he always taught us to respect each other because we are all equal in the household and uh, outside my family um, i met a, an olympian from from norway who himself uh, participated and represented norway in, um, two, in 1992 barcelona olympic games and he was a diplomat in afghanistan his name is stick travik and he supported me and supported women to start playing judo. And that was also the first time that women and girls in Afghanistan were introduced to sport of judo and they participated in local competitions and international competitions. So these two men played a very important role uh, in my life. And um, as I mentioned, I have four brothers. One of my brother uh, is extremely kind. He's very open-minded and he always supported me and my other sisters to achieve our goals, whatever goal that is. That's it, yeah. And, and of course you are right that without men in our lives, we cannot, we women, um, we women cannot move forward. And also at the same times in men's life, when they are women, mothers, sisters, wives, and supporting partners, then they can move ahead. So it's a joint project, yes? Um, so we cannot move all alone. There must be uh, women figures or men figures who are always supporting us. So Fariba, thank you for opening these kind of challenges that you had. And of course, those, uh, those um, uh, you know, supporting factors, but there must be challenges on the way ahead because as you have mentioned, it was a war time. It was a time when U.S. invaded Afghanistan. And at that time, there was, you know, chaos. So as you, over the time period, you must have seen that there's a ban of women in Afghanistan uh, about discouraging them uh, to take part in any kind of, be that education or sports was, uh, I mean, it was a big thing for. Um, so how would you, how would you share those challenges that you had? Of course, you had the supporting and mentors that are there, but what kind of challenges that you faced over the time period? And I hope when you participated in the Olympics, that was a big deal. Thank you. Yes, the challenges were always there. So the challenges that starting from our economic situation, because uh, in 2001, uh, my family was just returning from Pakistan to Afghanistan from a refugee life. So our eco the economy was not great in the country and in our household, our, we didn't have a very good financial status to support me to go to the judo and uh, go have an education, go to school. So that challenge always were on a daily basis. For example, whenever I went to school at high school, so I would walk from my high school classroom to my dojo, the judo center. And that would be like 45 minutes to one hour walk on the street. Yeah. And in summer, cobble gets very hot. So it was yeah. hot and dry. So I would walk on foot to just to go for the training and also exactly. challenges from security challenges because um, we did not have good security back then. As you said, the U.S. invaded Afghanistan. So it was still a bit chaotic. So the yes. security situation was not good for girls to go outside, to be on her own, 
especially on foot, a uh, young girl with lots of enthusiasm and energy. And also the challenges between um, the gender inequality within our dojo, the judo centers, for example, a lot of things were uh, possible and were given and uh, provided for a men's team, but not with so much with uh, for a women's team. For example, in judo, we wear full uniform. We have wear the jacket and the pants and the belt. So good quality uniform was, would be given to the boys, but the those old ones, the judo geese that had a tear on the outside, it was like ripped, they will give it to the girls. So those are um, the challenges. Um, and also um, the challenges for, um, in general, for the girls, other girls to come and practice the judo um, as well. But uh, given our determination and our vision for equality and for, yeah. for us, for, for, for everyone, we managed to overcome those challenges. But it was extremely hard, I, I must say. Yeah, I can imagine. I can, I can truly imagine. And Fariba, what was, the, what was the marathon towards the Olympics? I mean, I really wanted to know. And I hope that my viewers who are friends who are listening to us right now, we really want to know that what are the marathon? I mean, the, the progress towards the Olympics are coming and how the, how, the, how the selection process was done. And how did you manage to reach, reach Olympics? I mean, this was a huge task. Um, there was a first woman going first. I hope that there was another woman as well. You are the first few women who were there in Afghanistan, uh, you know, reaching from Afghanistan to Olympics. How was that period? How was that, you know, moments? And can you share that? I really love to hear that. And of course, many girls who are listening to us, they might be looking at you and seeing that there are challenges, but they are also challenges are meant to be broken. Yes, absolutely. So I still remember like yesterday. Because I was good in judo, I immediately uh, joined the national team and I was selected to represent Afghanistan locally, like competitions in Turkey, in India, and so many other competitions. Um, and Afghanistan was getting ready to send a delegate and a team of athletes to 2004 Athens Olympic Games. Because before that, at 2000 Sydney Olympic Games, Afghanistan was um, banned from the Olympic movement because of the Taliban's regime. So yeah. it was extremely challenging, but it was also extremely exciting because we were working together to send um, Afghanistan's team to the Olympics. So there were um, five athletes, uh, including myself, two girls and three boys. So mm -hmm. the other girl was 100 meter runner uh, because my competition was first before her competition on the IOC International Olympic Committee's record. They put my name as the first woman from Afghanistan because my competition was first. So I got lucky with the um, with the schedule uh, there. Uh, yeah. It it was uh, it was extremely uh, memorable. Uh, for example, yeah. our coaches were getting ready. They would give us the uh, the uniform, the national uniform. They were getting us prepared um, how to present Afghanistan, how to walk on the Olympic opening ceremony in Athens. Yeah. Um, Greece, and there were so many media around us because it was the first time Afghanistan was sending women's yes. team to the Olympics. So press was very, very interested. And I still yeah. remember when we went to the airport at the Kabul <laughs> International Airport, there were a bunch of press, international uh, and local uh, journalists. So they, they arranged a press conference and there were five athletes with our officials, coaches and delegates. So we were the Afghan uh, um, nationally uniform and i still remember that uh my family was also there my father my mother my nieces everybody was there to see us off and wish us good luck so it was like because it was such a unique and important moment it was also precedent we were sending precedent for the first time um mm -hmm. me having a short hair and dyed it red and the press outside as everybody was so interested and enthusiastic it was like you know when astronauts go to the space, it's like a yes. team and everybody's so interested because they're going for the first time and it's a huge mission. It is very big and also very, very unique. And everybody is very hopeful uh, that we are representing Afghanistan at the um, uh, Olympic arena and international platform. So it was very, very um, special. And those athletes, our team was seen as heroes, as peacemakers, like, 
at the same level like astronauts going to uh, space. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see the energy coming from you sharing those memories. And especially when you are setting precedent, there's a lot of expectations as well. There's a lot of challenges as well. It is not an easy, easy job. And reaching to that point of expectations, reaching to making that precedent, is is not an easy 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 um, journey. I mean, there's a lot of challenges. So Fariba, um, Olympics was there. You are done, and you made history. So after that, as I said, there's always not only that journey started, but also there are responsibilities started as well. So you begin establishing and doing a lot of. Uh, women right activists. So what what was the sense of that um, understanding of responsibility that you want your legacy to not end there? Uh, once Fariba participating, there are many Faribas coming. So uh, a lot of that is ha begin happening in 2004, after 2004, till now. So share with us about those, those sense of responsibilities. How do you think that anyone who is setting those precedents uh, you know, precedents, they have the responsibilities to share. Absolutely. So the expectation was very high. Uh, we were under a lot of pressure to perform well, to represent our country honorably and also appropriately, because we come from very um, traditional Islamic uh, culture and religion as well. So the expectation and my participation was a sports revolution for hundreds of other women and girls. When I returned from the Olympics, hundreds of other girls joined different sports, um, including martial arts. They joined soccer team, basketball, uh, volleyball, so many different forms of martial arts. So definitely it was a big movement. And myself mm -hmm. and the other girl, we were becoming the pioneer of the women's sport in Afghanistan for like since ever. The pioneer, there never been women uh, in that platform before from Afghanistan. The responsibilities and expectation were, for example, when I returned, my I was still at high school. So my high school invited me and my high school um, arranged the uh, uh, grade one and grade two with traditional clothes. They invited me at school. They sang the national anthem and the girls came. They gave us flowers um, and also well wishes and also thanking us for representing Afghanistan. And the, the expectation was that we I'll leave a positive legacy, a legacy that is impactful, a legacy which is tangible for other young Afghan women and for, mm -hmm. for all Afghanistan uh, in, in, in terms of the Afghan culture, tradition and religion um, as well. So uh, it, was, it was amazing. Uh, and I wanted to keep that legacy and I wanted to keep the momentum because I knew how impactful uh, it was uh, to see the other girls coming to the dojo, joining sport of judo and joining other sport. That was the biggest achievement I have done. I've gained from yeah. the Olympic Games. I did not win gold medal from the Olympics, but the legacy and the impact that it had in Afghan women's lives, that is more valuable than a gold medal for me. Exactly, exactly. I, I can truly imagine it's, it was more than a gold medal. Um, so Fariba, your participation, uh, of course, as you said, it's a, it's a very important big step. So what um, what what influence uh, you had made over the time period that the Afghan women partic begin participating more, not only in judo, but many other sports field, because sports gives you a lot of sense, sense of, um, you know, uh, understanding of yourself, your body, your mind, and uh, and especially taking care of yourself, right? Um, so what are what are the various other uh, uh, sports that that has been influenced after your participation, and uh, not only there in within Afghanistan. I hope that there are many women who had also, you know, follow you. So, what are who are those women, and what are the different sports that they are playing, and you're helping them? Um, each athlete find their way to which sport they fit in, what they like. I chose judo because I mentioned that I had a lot of energy and judo is high intense, high energy, high performance sport. So I wanted to go to the dojo and use my energy and burn my energy in a good way, in a positive way would empower me and I can do something for my uh, country. Uh, martial arts particularly become very popular in Afghanistan for two main reasons. First of all, because it was indoor sports. 
indoor yeah. sports women could go they would only do just for women where they could go and practice okay. and also because martial art is a little bit inexpensive than other sports yeah. for example soccer so um it was not very expensive for the coaches for the parents to pay and to organize yeah. competition and send their girls to uh, to the dojos uh, but um volleyball and soccer and basketball particularly also become very popular for afghan girls because the schools the high schools had competitive teams and the key teams competed uh, locally provincially and then eventually they represented afghanistan internationally um um as well so these were these were the points and inspiration my actual inspiration came from laila ali the daughter of muhammad mm -hmm. ali because back in the late 90s um i we we lived in Afghan in pakistan actually in peshawar pakistan and that was the time where leila ali would uh would compete so i would watch her uh live competitions in our small refugee home and a small glass tv on a cable and that was yeah. very inspiring that to see that women is competing at that level and it was a high intense of sports and uh, i want to do something uh like her uh, first, I chose boxing, but it was not impossible. But it was not possible for me to continue just mm -hmm. uh, boxing because there was no other girl in Afghanistan, yeah. and no coach would train me and coach me. So then I found judo and as well, and it was a really good uh, pathway. So I yeah. guess my inspiration also comes from other women uh, champion. Yeah, yeah. I think you had made set a precedent. You know, not only a precedent, but also inspired so many. Not only in Afghanistan, but also here in Pakistan. And of course, I was. Uh, I wanted those women who are listening to us right now. You can ask any question from Fariba, and we're continuously discussing about her journey and what she has achieved and what she is going to achieve in the future. Of course, she has made a lot of progress in advocating uh, women's rights about Afghanistan. So Fariba, let's talk about your initiatives that you had taken, especially after your Olympics um, uh, journey and your sports journey. And what are the various initiatives that you had taken? You are a founder of Women Leaders uh, a program as well. And you had the, this organization, this special organization that you had led. And there's a lot of different projects that you are doing. So tell us about that organization. And you had also, uh, because of a lot of different reasons, you had moved away from your country. So tell us about that as well and your initiative as well. And I see that there's a lot of, um, when you move away from your country, you actually give back more to your country in a, in a huge capacity. And I see that happening. So share with us. Thank you. I must say that I'm very grateful um, about my time in Pakistan because Pakistan has become second home for me. I have so many friends. I have so many good memories. I visited Qaid Azam University. It was amazing. I loved the campus. I loved my conversations with the students. I have such a good memory from, from Pakistan and I wish I could come and I would love to visit someday again. Um, the initiatives I have started, uh, the uh, Women List of Tomorrow, it's a um, small non-profit organization in Canada. Our mandate is to, to empower Afghan women through education and uh, sport. So we have different programs. We have scholarship programs, we have Afghanistan Learns Online program, and we also have a sports program, the, um, sorry, a sports program, yeah, GOAL, which stands for Girls of Afghanistan Lead. So mm -hmm. that program was to uh, support young women from Afghanistan to, gain empowerment and leadership through sports so they can become professional athletes uh, successful coaches instructors and also um, a leader in her community because right. sport is very empowering for women because it brings visibility it helps us work bring our mind and body together especially martial art because when you're playing you your your mind and body come together to achieve the goal you want and there's so many details that empowers um they empower yeah. you and the scholarship program is that we find sorry we find yeah scholarships for um, qualified young afghan women from afghanistan to come to canada to study high school as well as yeah. college and universities because Education played a very important role in women's and girls' lives and men's life as well in Afghanistan because when women had education, she had jobs, she had employment, and she brought income to the family, which made her equal to the male counterparts in her um, household. And also education is 
um, a light in the darkness when we had education system back in Afghanistan under the Republican regime. We had all God's robotics team. We had nurses. We had the doctors. We had professors as well as ministers. So we could see that how much it empowered them in their professional life as well as in their personal uh, lives. Uh, the gold yeah. program was very active um, before um, before the Taliban, but now yeah. um, it's everything is online. When the gold program was active, um, I sent two uh, members of the judo team from the member of the national team to Japan for two weeks professional training to study mm -hmm. at Tokai University because they have really, really good uh, judo program for all yeah, judos, judo athletes worldwide. Mm -hmm. And they have trained hundreds of Olympians, hundreds of world ch uh, champions. So they spent there. And um, um, the education program has been um, very successful. Um, in the last two years, we were able to secure 20 full ride scholarships for women in Afghanistan, high school, college, and universities. From the mm -hmm. 20, 11 of, of them are master's students. They're currently studying in Canada. Five of them are high schoolers, so grade 11 and 12, and some of them are graduating June this year, some of them graduating in December in 2024. Mm -hmm. So that has been extremely successful and life-changing for those um, Afghan women uh, who came from Afghanistan, and they know, they know that this is the pathway for their leadership for future as well. Exactly. And I see that there's a lot of action taking, not only talking about women empowerment and struggles and also highlighting the significance of education and highlighting about the human rights and women rights. But also you had taken concrete steps, for example, like goal that you were sharing uh, and judo uh, training and sports training. Um, I see that you have also have Afghan women's employment program. What is that about? Yeah, for sure. So um, I'm a practical person. I would like to, my goal in my life is to put theory into practice because without the practice, we will not be able to achieve. And I believe we as human beings, we are very smart. We are intelligent. We can get innovative and creative to support each other, especially for, uh, for women empowerment. So I am working on daily basis, like how can I put the words into actions to get exactly. results because I would rather work tirelessly and wear myself out and then sit in a classroom and just talk about the theories. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for theory as well, but I like to practice them um, as well. Uh, for your second question, um, it's, um, it comes with its own challenges um, as well. And the, the gold program has been very successful and we moved all the um, athletes, the, their activities um, online and that comes with its own issues as well. Of course, yes. Of course, I can imagine. And of course, um, Fariba, since 2004 and over the time period when you have been struggling and you moved away from your country, you had also taken your own education very, very much seriously. And you did a uh, master's in, uh, you did, did your bachelor's in political science and you had also built yourself, you had also been um, uh, Got, uh, you know, uh, building your uh, coaching certificates about judo, and you've been traveling globally. What, I mean, what is the importance of self coaching and self leadership? Important importance of those things that are important for yourself, because when you are equipped and skilled yourself, then you able, you are able to, uh, you know, give back to the community, to the girls, to the women, or people that you can influence. So tell us about that as well. For sure. When I came to Canada, the first week I arrived in Vancouver, Canada, I applied to different universities, to Simon Fraser University, as well as University of British Columbia, which is located in Vancouver. And I was accepted at both universities immediately. Then I chose to go to UBC because it was closer to my uh, home. Um, I knew that without having a proper education, I wouldn't be able to achieve my goals. And me, as a, as a leader, if I wanted to lead, if I wanted to empower other women, it was crucial for me to get education myself first. I needed education about the education. How can I empower? Like I, as a facilitator and supporting other women, I want to learn, I want to have the appropriate knowledge for the work I'm doing so I can lead um, others. Um, yeah. 
lead with an example. Yeah, lead with. Carry on, please. Yeah. So um, in the um, in the fellowship uh, leadership uh, program with IWF, we learned yeah. even more. I learned even more that um, uh, great leaders are those leaders who ask the right questions. So one of the questions I asked myself: Do I have the right education? Have mm -hmm. I equipped myself appropriately and properly so I can f I can support um, um, others? And also for the uh, for the second question. Self-coaching is very important. The reason that I went to Japan and I spent four weeks in Japan, it was four weeks intense training. So in the morning we had practical and then in, in the afternoon we had theory and then we had visiting, we, we had to go visit schools, different dojos to learn from other students. It was very intense, but it was very important for me to know the foundation of judo and exactly. to know more what is about judo. And um, mm -hmm. after four weeks training and we received our um, uh, certificates from Japan's top and highest level uh, judokas and judo coaches, uh, yeah. Kosei Inoue, who has gold medals from the Olympics twice, two gold yeah. medals for Japan and he's extremely professional and well known in judo. He's like a star uh, mm -hmm. in, in judo. So I, I gained that certificate. And getting that certificate was also the first, made me the first Afghan women from Afghanistan to have a coach, professional coaching certificate in the sport of uh, judo. So I think that education for myself, for sport as well as education and the leadership I have, it's extremely important because I don't mm -hmm. want to be like blind leading the blind. We will not yeah. achieve anything. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's the beauty of it. And especially when you are sharing about your stories and the work, um, you are an unconventional, you had chosen a very unconventional and challenging uh, sports and, of course, uh, training as a coach. And then that is also an unconventional way of doing it in a, in a sense that you yourself became a leader, um, equipped yourself with the skills, and now you are, you know, you can, you are coaching the young people, young leaders, women leaders who are leading at the same time. So one of the important things that I would like to share with my audience is that we both are International Women's Forum's uh, leadership fellows. And International Women's Forum has given us the opportunity from women from Afghanistan and also from Pakistan like myself um, to have the skills and approaches and networks that we can utilize uh, to build our skills to be the women leaders, uh, equipped, successful women leaders of tomorrow. Um, so, Fadiba, tell us about your experience about International Women's Forum, which is very important for all of us. And we're also heading towards its end when we will be meeting again uh, there in Harvard. Um, and in uh, my inaugural program, I shared with my audience about the uh, forum's entire um, uh, structure, um, what what the forum is all about, um, how how the women who are successful, helping the young women leaders like ourselves um, to uplift them and building the legacies that we are also continuing to build legacies in the future. So it's a chain reaction that women are building up. Um, so do share about your legacy and what are your envision for this leadership program that you are doing with me. And of course, many other great women leaders who are in our class. There are 40 of them from different countries across the world, including both of us and also um, the amazing women. And I'll make sure and I promise that I will be bringing all those women in our conversations uh, in this Global Women Insight. So, Fariba, tell us about your journey during this fellowship program. IWF, International Women's Forum, is an amazing, uh, great and uh, great organization um, that wants to support other women, as you mentioned that. So when I was selected, uh, when I was nominated and selected for the fellowship 2023 slash 2024, I was extremely honored. And when I look at their curriculum, at their criteria, I realized that it's a perfect fit for me because it teaches the young leaders, young and not by age, but like you're going to the uh, C-level leadership. Uh, they're teaching them how to be um, impactful and uh, inspiring leaders. But how can we be uh, impactful and inspiring? As we mentioned, be, without the education, without the equipment, we will not be impactful leaders. So the IWF uh, fellowship program 
it's very practical it gives you those skills to become leaders and it is very tactical as well it gives us the ability and the skills to have the problem solving skills putting theory into practice finding solutions uh for the pr problems how can we tackle gender inequality and yeah. um, we have recently um, attended our first formal uh, classes and the leadership training at INSEAD University in Fontainebleau in France. It was a four days intense training. And in, in that intense training, the lecturers and the leaders who uh, teach uh, leaders, executives, they talked up, they talked about paradoxical leadership, about they talked about leading in volatile times, which are very, very relevant because exactly we live in a society and a time that the world is changing really fast our society exactly. is really changing fast if we don't have the right education then we will fall behind and if we fall behind then we can't lead the future uh future leaders so it 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 makes you really ready to be um, a leader and join the sea level they want women exactly. to have their rights, support, and education to uh, join uh, other women in the boardroom, become executives, become CEOs, become ministers, become bank executives and business executives with the right um, training. And it was it was great. And the next upcoming training is at Harvard Business School in Boston from June 1st to June 7th. So I really look forward to that because the readings are going to be amazing. The lecturers are going to be amazing and they will help me get ready for an exactly. impactful, inspiring leader. And of course, one of the important, apart from all the curriculum and, and opportunities that are offered to us, one of the important thing is that the networks that we are building from the C-suit executive level, high level women who are there making decisions at the highest level uh, to the women like us who are of course, we are making decisions, but we need skills and we need mentorship. We need relationships to help us grow as we as we make woman tribe or or helping each other, making a society which is which is uh, uh, having women which are well equipped. And of course, through our legacy project, as Fariba is doing and myself, our legacy projects are in fact we are giving back to the to the young people and uh, like us. Um, who, who have been helped by the senior women leaders who are there at the decision making table. Um, thank you so much for highlighting this important uh, fellowship program. Um, and, and I also I, I shared in the my earlier um, episode that it's an honor to be there uh, as a woman leader there. Um, and of course, uh, Fariba, one of one of the things that um, is always I wanted to ask you about is that your advocacy program and your leadership, um, you are impacting community which is far away from your place where you are currently residing, for example, Canada. And then what are the different challenges that you face, for example, connecting with people there in the, in the ground and how you overcome them? Because living in a different geographical space and impacting communities in a different geographical space or have their own capacity, their own challenges. Of course, there are opportunities. Um, how you are overcoming them and how you are building those challenges in your favor. It is definitely challenging. One of the biggest challenges I have is the time zone. Exactly. <laughs> so I work during uh, Pacific uh, time zone hours yeah. and then yeah. my day doesn't end at 5 p.m. Yeah. My day starts at 5 p.m. because it's morning in Afghanistan and we have many volunteers. We have many students in Afghanistan yes. who are uh, taking advantage of our online education system and programs. So I, I, I map into like 10, uh, 10 p.m., 11 uh, p.m. Uh, yeah. It is definitely challenging because I'm not in Afghanistan, but we have the blessing and we have the advantage of the Internet. So the internet has been extremely helpful that connects us uh, with those girls and that I can continue my advocacy. Advocacy yes. can be done from anywhere in the world. If you have the passion and you have the principles, what do you want to advocate for? I believe you can do it anywhere. People exactly. did advocacy before the internet. They wrote letters, they uh, spoke on the media, newsletters, uh, radio. So it's absolutely do, uh, possible. And it's also very important to keep the message uh, going because 
Unfortunately, as everyone's aware, the situation in Afghanistan is devastating. It's beyond devastation and beyond my word what I can explain. And women's rights, they are in dire situation. But we are planning to help each individual woman individually, one by one, and trying to plant the seed of success in their lives so they become independent um, leaders. Um, there are other political challenges, there are social challenges, but we as women, we have the intelligence and the, um, the ability to solve those challenges and overcome. And it's very easy if we look at what are our principles, what are the right thing to do here, and that guide us um, very easily, where do we want to go? And that is our vision, our mission and vision is clear, then whatever comes on the sides, any challenges, that is doable yeah doable yeah it's every and of course when we were discussing about earlier when we were discussing that you're action oriented you can take action if you have a clear vision clear goal and of course this fellowship program as well is helping us to have clearer goals and make the achievable goals and helping us to build uh, Fariba, can you also share with us your success, success stories that you had mentor over the time period and you have helped those women, uh, young women. And, and I hope that there are a lot of success stories. I would not like to say that a lot of challenges, I know that a lot of challenges we can, you know, we can have, I mean, hours and hours of discussions on what are kind of challenges. But what I would really like to make the spotlight on those success stories of women because of you who had been there, um, um, you know, came alive uh, because of their, you know, inner strength building up from inspiring from you. So can, could you also share those moments uh, and stories as well with us about women? Absolutely. So one of our high school students who were in Afghanistan and she came to Canada on a full ride scholarship through our organization. Mm -hmm. She's graduating in June this year and she wants wow. to become the first female president of Afghanistan. And given wow. her ability and passion uh, co and competency, I believe someday she will become president. So it's, this is the aspiration she got from the organization. Awesome. And also um, the 10 students for a master's program at University of British Columbia, that's a high prestige scholarship. It's a very expensive, very, very selective and competitive. And they're all study, going to study to become engineers. So it's a life changing uh, for them. And also one of the highlight of our organization, especially from the sports program is that back in 2020, I was supporting a female judo athlete from Afghanistan and I advocated for her and I put the words into actions and I contacted the International, International Judo Federation, IJF and IUC International Olympic Committee. Mm -hmm. And I uh, helped her register to the um, IUC and IJF refugee uh, team. So which mm -hmm. resulted for her to compete at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. And now wow. she continues yeah, to uh, compete at the upcoming Paris 2024 Olympic Games in the refugee team. Wow. So those were the, um, the highlights. And one of our um, success story is from one of our judo um, athletes whose judo dojo was shut down by the Taliban and she was in a dire situation. So I found her a scholarship to one of the colleges in Ontario, Canada. Now she's mm -hmm. right now, she's studying sports leadership at fitness and health promotion. And it's a very good fit. So now she's thinking to become a sports teacher or successful um, athlete. So yeah. obtaining and securing 20 full night scholarship in Canada for Afghan women is extremely difficult. This is its own. Yes success the story oh yes i can see that i can see the redness i can see the beamingness i see the you know happiness on your face when you share those stories i mean these are the women who are making the impact and are making their lives you know um, changing their lives right um so fariba with your experience and you have the challenges that you face uh, what are the future plans of women leaders of tomorrow and for your own personal advocacy as well. How would you see the future? I mean, they, you must have had a goal about women leaders of tomorrow. So what kind of future challenges uh, that, of course, there are challenges, but what are the future holes for you? The future I see, and I'm optimistic, uh, the future I see that the, the graduates from our scholarship program to become, they, when they will become, ministers, doctors, one of them is studying health sciences now, 
uh, doctors, Olympians, and to yeah. represent Afghanistan and also to increase the capacity of uh, society and uh, the future is that they're all going to be leaders in their own uh, professions and their own uh, fields and they will um, lead. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, future is brighter. Uh, another important question is about your own, uh, what, what, what future holds for you? What are the different goals that you made for yourself and what will be future look like for you? For me, future looks like I will be um, leading more girls. Um, and I would like to see myself as a facilitator rather than um, the leaders. I would love to see more girls graduating from our programs. Uh, my future goal is to become um, a person that they can rely on and I can support them each yeah. individually customized leadership and mentorship uh, program because yeah. I believe in the young generation and I want to invest in the um, in the young generation. And yeah. I could see myself doing this work until retirement. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, and and for, your, for young Afghan girls or women from Pakistan as well who are dreaming of following your steps, Fariba, what are the, um, and of course, if they are looking at sports or activism or advocacy or strengthening themselves, what advice would you give to those young young minds and young eyes who are listening to you right now? My advice is that don't give up. Don't give up and never compromise your principles under any circumstance, under any uh, regime. I want every Afghan woman athletes from Afghanistan and st academic students to become independent, to maneuver uh, themselves because um, they are capable, they are able, they just need to work on their confidence and they need to use their confidence to be successful. Each one of them is, are extremely intelli intelligent and smart. They just need to realize that and exactly. work from their self-esteem, build self-esteem, build confidence and mm -hmm. become their own leaders. And I want every single woman uh, from Afghanistan and in Pakistan um, as well that please be proud of yourself appreciate yourself as well realize yourself um, as a successful leader because you are born you are alive and you matter mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it is up to us now how we gonna inspire um, other Others, um, yes. athletes and other youth and the, our society exactly exactly fariba and and your uh, story of resilience your had inspired so many and i see that a lot of appreciation comments are coming on on all the platforms that we are streaming here the li uh, live and of course there are a lot of appreciation about your work and your resilience uh, one of the questions that has been asked by or one of the audience is that about um since 2020 uh, I mean, after the um, U.S. left, there's a lot of chaos in Afghanistan, and it is not the country that that it was there almost 10 years ago, maybe, or maybe 20 years ago. It is going in very different directions. Um, how would you foresee a country that in Afghanistan? Uh, how you see your country's future? How you want your country to be like that? Um, could you share about those experiences? For example, you envision an Afghanistan to be look like this. So share with us. Well, thank you for that question. Afghanistan is indeed in a devastating uh, situation. It's not fair to what happened to Afghanistan and Afghans did not deserve that. What I envision in Afghanistan, despite the current situation, that uh, we will uh, succeed, uh, peace, democracy, human rights will prevail. And I envisioned Afghan women to go to space, join NASA, now become NASA engineers, become doctors, uh, become engineers, robotics engineers. And also I wanna see Afghanistan and I, I envision Afghanistan as one of the successful countries uh, in the world because we have a rich history, we have a rich culture and Afghanistan itself, the country is very, very beautiful. I envision yeah. Afghanistan as like a spot for two international tourists, yeah. in a business center because we have so many mines and minerals in Afghanistan. Um, mm -hmm. in the mountains. Um, that's the Afghanistan I envision. Very modern, free, peaceful, and mm -hmm. the youth have, uh, um, the youth is governing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Fariba, for this amazing, uh, uh, I mean, dream of having a country which is free for everyone, not only for women, but also for men to explore their abilities and build their, to have the all the human rights, all the gender equality, all the rights to achieve their goals, be that in education, be that in sports, be that into any unconventional field. Um, and I hope that it is an absolutely uh, desire of all of us, not only there in Afghanistan, but also here in Pakistan, that we have a peaceful place, region where we all thrive, where girls are safe, um, where women can achieve their dreams without any fear, without any kind of, you know, challenge or any kind of obstacles. Um, and it's been an absolute pleasure and honor to speak to you, Fariba. And of course, uh, this Anything that you would like to share before we, uh, we, we, we are signing off? Anything that you would like to share to my audience? No, just thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure and honor to meet you, to see you again, and uh, to talk with the audience of the great people of Pakistan. Um, I have so many good memories. It has been very joyful. And today is the, uh, going to be the highlight of my fall week that I saw you and I spoke um, Pakistan, I connected with Pakistan again. So just thank you so much for your kindness. And I look forward to future and further friendship between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Thank you so much, Fariba. And I hope that we'll continue having the conversation. Fariba, you stay with us and I'll ask my uh, audience that we would like to say uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for your comments and appreciation. Um, we'll come back again um, after the Eid holidays. We're almost hitting Eid as a celebration time. It's a time moment with our families and friends. And I hope that uh, uh, and I myself, Fariba, and all of us, uh, I would like to extend Eid Mubarak to everyone who is celebrating. I hope that you'll stay protected stay happy in peace and may have may you all have the blessed uh Ramad last uh, days of ramadan and i hope that our countries become more peaceful um they can offer more uh, human rights rights to uh, living uh, to to people to live in dignity and honor thank you so much fariba thank you so much everyone and a very good night to all of you from Pakistan and also uh, good uh, you know, afternoon there in Canada um, and Afghanistan as well. We are sharing the same time zone. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Uh, enjoy yourself and thank you so much. Good night. <laughs>